and on Monday night, October 20, scheduled to compete on the pro wrestling card will be the likes of Pedro Morales. And Pedro Morales will square off against the intercontinental heavyweight champion, Ken Patera, in what should prove to be a tremendous match, to say the least. From there, we'll see the rematch in Madison Square Garden on the 20th of October. Larry Zabisco again battling Tony Gurria. And Sergeant Slaughter, front and center, will meet Bob Backlund for the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Our guest, first of all, will be Larry Zabisco. Mr. Zabisco, apparently not uh, really looking forward to facing Tony Gurria again in Madison Square Garden. I don't look forward to facing somebody that should not be there. Not only one time, but twice. Well, I'm going to say something. I believe that even though he's trying his best not to show it, that Tony got hurt pretty bad. And there, if he had any kind of brain, he would not even show up. Now, I know because he's got a big ego and he likes the women to whistle at him and, and stuff when he walks out, that he is going to, you know, crawl into that ring if he has to, and then he's going to come up with another excuse of why he didn't win. And I will bet my life, because I know how he is, and I know that he would do anything to hold on and to keep himself a name. That may be what you're betting in your life. No, I'm not betting my life. The first time I got in the ring with him, everybody saw what happened, and there's no way he's going to go through it again. Larry Zabisco in his commentary concerning the rematch in Madison Square Garden. Our special guest this week, none other than the World Wrestling Federation title holder, Bob Backlund. Mr. Backlund, uh, in what could be an uphill battle against the likes of Sergeant Slaughter. Yes, I, I, it could be, Vince. You know, he's a very, very tough man. And last week I happened to hear some of his comments, how he's uh, been putting, he put down the, the young kid, the young men, I should say, that were coming into the service, uh, the ones that were crying to him, the, you know, the ones that he was pushing, the ones that he was driving uh, through the wall, trying to, to get into condition and driving and driving to where they were begging him to quit. Well, um, all those people, that you done that to, Mr. Slaughter, are out there. Some of them are out there. They're going to come down to that, the matches in Madison Square Garden because they couldn't do nothing back to you because you would have thrown them in the, the brig for 30 or 40 days with no food. But now, if I punish you a little bit just for them, you're not going to be able to throw me in the brig for 30 days. You're not going to be able to do it. There's no uh, Uncle Sam behind you right now. It's just going to be you and I the drill sergeant against myself. Bob, I'll tell you, the fans are looking forward to this because you take a look at Sergeant Slaughter, notwithstanding his military background, this is an extraordinary athlete in every sense of the word. And with that regimentation that he has uh, adhered to all his life, with the rigorous training, much like yourself, although for different reasons, it's going to be a tough one. Yes, it is, Vince. You know, he's a great man. I can respect him, but I don't respect how he treated people in the past, and uh, I don't think that he should be treating them like that now. Thank you very much. Bob Backlund in his commentary concerning the upcoming main event in Madison Square Garden on the 20th of October as he meets the former D.I. Sergeant Slaughter. With that in mind, our guest now, the number one contender, Mr. Slaughter, along with the Grand Wizard. I heard the drivel of Bob Backlund out here, and the only thing I can agree with him on is the fact that no, Sergeant Slaughter cannot put you in the brig, Mr. Backlund, but he can do the entire world an even bigger favor. He can put you out of professional wrestling. Is that correct, Sergeant? That's right. You know, I don't think Bob Backlund knows what he's got himself into. Do you know, boy? Do you know what it feels like to have the Cobra clutch put on you? Do you know that feeling? Well, go stick your head in the vice. That's what it feels like. You need to show me a little more respect, punk. You're not showing me enough respect. I want you, before this match even starts, to have your shoe shine kit there, and I want you down on your hands and knees, and I want you to shine my boots. Then I want you to get up, and I'll knock you down again. Then I want you to get up, and I'll knock you down again. Then you do 20 push-ups. Then you'll run around the arena 52 times, 53 if you're not careful. And you, I've told you week after week to get that haircut. What's the matter with you, boy? What's the matter Sergeant with you, boy? Sergeant Slaughter squares off against Bob Backlund in the main event as wrestling returns to Madison Square
Mr. USA against the Black Demon should be an interesting match. Atlas has never looked finer. Here we go. Taking this commercial time out, on Monday night, October 20th, Madison Square Garden once again brings professional wrestling excitement right home with Bob Backlund, the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion, meeting the now-ranked number one contender. It's the Grand Wizard's latest pride and joy, Sergeant Slaughter, of course. Sergeant Slaughter has been merciless. He is a raw bone, hard-boiled individual, as Bob Backlund certainly is going to find out. Atlas taking uh, exception to that closed fist shot of the Black Demon. Atlas taking over the Demon now with uh, some ease, although a hook of the tights now, and uh, Atlas' shoulders were uh, on the canvas there for a moment. Atlas really in no danger of being pinned. being pushed back now in a legal fashion. We'll see what the demon can come up here with in the way of offense. Well, from our vantage point, a blatant choke hold. Now the vantage point of referees as well, the hold broken. Years ago, there was a black demon in the World Wrestling Federation. This is not the same one. The black demon years ago, much, much larger a giant of a man, a 300-pounder. Listen to the smack of the flesh as Atlas pours it on. <laughs> Atlas, a champion in every respect. Spin over there. Nice sit out, spin around by the Black Demon. We'll see what Atlas can do to come up in the way of an account of a counter. Not much if this continues. The choke that was. Demon trying to keep uh, the choke hold away from the referee. Forearm smash landing again. Blatant choke hold, and Mr. Atlas spins the Demon around. The demon to the buckle and really whipped in there with authority. Atlas with the demon up in the air and look at that. Oh, unbelievable power possessed by Mr. USA Tony Atlas. just did would be tough enough to do with uh, a barbell equally balanced on both sides but uh, with a man up there it's it's equally I mean it's just that much tougher Atlas does indeed do phenomenal things in the squared circle things that no one can do but Atlas some sort of gesture as if he's going to take the mask off the black demon. Nice takedown by the demon. Now the demon has hooked uh, the mouth of Atlas. Now, now he's back into a pressure point. spins out of it quite nicely. Working on the wrist, tightens it up a little bit more, spins the demon around, Atlas goes down with the arm bar. Atlas continues to move, one of his great assets.
Atlas with those mammoth sized arms. And of course, when you see Atlas, you don't just see well-conditioned arms, you see a perfectly symmetrical body. His first love, wrestling, came up through the amateur ranks and now has made one of the great pro wrestlers in terms of status. Chopped to the throat there by the demon. As Atlas back to the corner. And Atlas, if he wants it, he can have it. We'll go to work on that mask. If Atlas starts pulling and tugging on that mask, something will give. He'll either rip the mask off or the head will come off. Something will give, such as the power of Tony Atlas. Taking over there. Atlas right back on him, though. Scoops up Mr. Uh, the Demon, the Black Demon. Follows through an elbow down into the kidney area, actually, as Demon tried to spin out of it. Atlas was going to appear as though he was going to a suplex. The demon, demon hooked the rope. Now Atlas backs off. You know, you get the impression that if Atlas wanted to, he could end this match at any time. No one explodes quite like Tony Atlas does. And if Atlas decides to explode, I think it'll be all over for the Black Demon. Well, the Demon, perhaps a bit desperate now, he's done everything possible to defeat Tony Atlas, so apparently the Demon feels as though he must now resort to more aggressive tactics if he has a chance of defeating Tony Atlas. getting himself up, getting himself together. Atlas. One, two, he gets it. Yes, Atlas toyed around with the demon there for a while, then decided, well, I've had enough. I'll go for it. I'll squash him like a grape, and that's exactly what he did. shall return as we continue with more professional wrestling in just a moment. ...became champions again, Pedro Morales and Andre the Giant are very likely, Mr. Albano, to relieve you once again of the tag team title. Well, I guess the Worldwide Wrestling Federation is trying to prove something or pull trickery on a captain. It wasn't to be a title match, as you stated, but it is a title match now, but I don't care. We're champions, and we're ready, and for the tenth time, the captain has control of the world champions, the tag team champions. This is a record in itself. And now we're going in there against Andre the Giant, that freak of nature, and the former Worldwide Wrestling Champion, Pedro Morales. Well, I'm confident, I'm ready, I'm confident, Complaining a tough time, but I'll assure you of a victory. We want Tony. Listen to him. We want Tony. Making reference, of course, to Tony Gurria. The only one who doesn't want Tony is Larry Zabisco. Here we go. Gurria, or rather Tony, Gurria's former tag team partner, Larry Zabisco, now just about ready to lock up with Steve King. The following is brought to you by Capital Wrestling Corporation. This Thursday night, October 2nd, it's Highland Park, New Jersey for professional wrestling excitement, the locale, the Highland Park High School. Tony Gurria will be on the card as well as Mr. Rick Martell. 
Then one week from this Monday, the 6th of October, it's the Mid-Hudson Civic Center of Poughkeepsie once again with pro wrestling action. Captain Louis Albano's Wild Samoans will be there in individual competition, as will the one and only Pedro Morales. You can see Zabisco maneuvering around a bit. Trying to uh, maneuver King into his corner. See what sort of strategy Zabisco is up to now. If King comes into the corner, see King uh, having a few words there with Larry Zabisco. King gets to get a bit closer, you would think Zabisco would try and spin him around, keep King in the corner, and then go to work on him. You would not see Larry Zabisco attempt to do this against a better wrestler. Zabisco slamming his man, Steve King, to the canvas, and now standing over him. Zabisco in complete control at the moment. Well-executed suplex, Zabisco spins around, and just like that, he gets him. So, short work for Larry Zabisco. No competition here for Larry Zabisco. There will, however, be other days, and Larry Zabisco will be faced with rigid competition. And the fans, I'm sure, are looking forward to that day. Did you see that? Well, that's a height of arrogance. Larry Zabisco blowing kisses to the fans here at this jam-packed arena. The kisses, and indeed the sentiment, certainly not reciprocal in any fashion at all. Larry Zabisco continues to be one of the most despised wrestlers to ever don a pair of tights. Congratulations on that, Bob. We won't dwell on it because I know you have to look beyond that victory. You can't savor it too long because now you have to look to what is the number one contender, Sergeant Slaughter. Yes, well, I want to thank the fans for all their great, great support. I really, really appreciate it. But like you said, you always have to look to the future. And right now, I have to look for, forward to a match with Sergeant Slaughter. You know, I listen to him speak, and I'm, I'm beginning to not like the guy already. Just because he was a drill instructor in the service, kids coming in there, young men coming in the service, 18 years old, and he can push them to be on a point of uh, not even be able to get up, not even be able to walk, not even be able to talk the next day, and cut their hair off and take advantage of them. Does that make a man out of him? Just because he could boss somebody around? Well, it's not going to be an 18-year-old man in the ring. It's going to be a man in condition and ready to wrestle like never been wrestled before. Bob Backlund, meet Sergeant Slaughter. Here in the corner to my left, from the Isle of Malta, weighing 275 pounds, here is Baron Miguel Cicluna. I'm in the corner to my right from Auckland, New Zealand, weighing 244 pounds, here is Taking on the big baron, Cicluna, of course. The larger of the two, not necessarily the tougher of the two. Here we go. Taking this commercial time out, one week from tomorrow night, the 5th of October, it's the New Haven Veterans Memorial Coliseum for a mat extravaganza second to none. 
Anyone who's anything in the world of pro wrestling will be on the card at the Coliseum, including the likes of Mr. Pat Patterson. Also, quick draw Rick McGraw, the Wild Samoans of Captain Louis Albano, and Ken Patera, the Intercontinental Champion, who hopes to make the most of a golden opportunity in New Haven at the Coliseum on October 5th. Tony Guerrilla having his problems with Baron Mikel Sakuna, and you can hear it now the capacity crowd clapping for Tony Guerrilla, trying to encourage him to get something going. It's tough to do when you're there against the likes of the Big Baron. Baron Mikel Sakuna is one of the few wrestlers to have reigned as long as he has as a contender in the World Wrestling Federation. So Cluna on any given night capable of defeating any one wrestler. Just last week, Tony Guerrilla and his tag team partner at that time, Brene Goulet, giving the Samoans a run for their money in the tag team final in the elimination tournament for the championship. It was unfortunate that the Samoans once again became tag team champions. Certainly not at the fault of Tony Guerrilla, for that matter, not at the fault of Rene Goulet either. So perhaps Guerrilla will pursue individual interests now. Or then again, perhaps Korea will team up with another tag team partner and continue his pursuit to become a tag team champion. Well, thus far, this match has been all Baron Mikel Cicluna. Tony Gurria appears to be almost out of it. Sakuna's going to come after him. And Gurria, in the, just a short fall there, from the apron down to the concrete floor, rammed the back of his head against the concrete floor. That's one of the problems of being struck, whether it be wrestling, boxing, whatever it is. In that, when one is struck, the effect of the blow is one thing, but when you fall, the effect of that as well can compound and sometimes actually be more, uh, more of an injury than the actual blow itself. Now Maria picking up the momentum. He stayed on the outside as he should, listening to the count of the referee, but all the while clearing the cobwebs and Tony Garia now hammering away on Baron Mikel Sakuna. Well, the roar of the crowd, I believe, and the accusations by some of the fans around ringside is that Sakluna used some sort of object, which we have seen many, many times in the past. So Sakluna affording the effort of Tony Garia, who really had a lot of momentum going for himself there uh, just minutes ago. Tony Garia has well, just taken tremendous sums of punishment thus far in this match. Most of it to the head area. Now, from our vantage point, we can clearly see there is some sort of object tucked in the tights now, Baron Mikel Sakluna. That, of course, 
one of the secrets, I guess, of the longevity of the career of Baron Mikel Sakuna. Sakuna using the shortcut method. Many times, however, Sakuna is disqualified for his actions, and thus the shortcut method does not always work for the Big Baron. himself up despite the overwhelming odds against it now and suck a right hand another one knocks Sakuna down to the canvas Tony Gurria with momentum with the fire needed so now it's Sakuna who's feeling the effects Wait a minute, Sakuna going down to the tights. No. And a tip was made by Sakuna a moment ago to once again use that object count of one, two, and almost three. A drop kick that partially missed. It was partially. Tony Garea has the object. Sakuna complaining to referee Dick Worley that Tony Garea used an object, and perhaps even referee Dick Worley saw the use of the object. Perhaps he didn't. But even if he did, it was somewhat justified on the part of Tony Garea. In the time, six minutes and 54 seconds, the winner, Tony Garea. Tony Garea victorious, but I think Garea wants to use it, uh, that object that is, a little more on the Big Baron, who now will head to the tall timber. Dick Worley now gets a close-hand look at the object that was used by first Sakuna and then Tony Garea. We return in just a moment. With a 10-minute time limit, but first of all, we introduce the manager of the Bailiff, Captain Albano. I'm in the corner to my right from New York. combined weight of 614 pounds, here is the new World Wrestling Federation's World's Tag Team Champion. Yes, indeed, Lou Albano and company making wrestling history, regaining the Tag Team Championship. Many said it couldn't be done, but here they will be tested this week by Johnny Rods and Jose Estrada, a very aggressive tag team combination. Pausing for this commercial message, in Madison Square Garden, on the 20th of October, Ken Patera comes back with his Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship belt around his waist. The belt will be up for grabs. It's on the line. The opponent, Pedro Morales the former champion of the World Wrestling Federation, making a fairly good showing for himself on the last Garden card. And with the support of the fans, as Morales always likes, he could very well become a new champion after October 20. All right, here we go. Johnny Rods stepping over, coming back off the rope. Seeker to the canvas, Johnny Rods and Jose Estrada 
should give, as we said before, the Samoans a run for the money, although this is a non-title event. Nice arm drop takedown. Another one. Drop kick. Yes, sir. Rods and Estrada now double teaming Big Sika. I'm surprised that the Samoans have signed on for this match. You would think that Lou Albano would be highly selective as to whom the Samoans faced. Referee having his problems going from one side, then another. The additional weight, of course, on the rope, making it that much tougher for the referee to help the Samoan escape. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, perhaps uh, there are many times that the fans, oh! We've seen the majority of the fans boo this combination of Johnny Rods and Jose Estrada in the past, but they're not booing this week. They would like to see Rods and Estrada take the Samoans. Yes, sir, Rods and Estrada making a very good account of themselves thus far against the Samoans. And you have to mix it up with the Samoans. You have to keep them off balance. Give them the unexpected. That's the way you beat them. You don't beat them by trying to match power with power. You don't beat them by trying to really take their heads off. Although, Sika now inflicting some pain there on Johnny Rods off a of back over as well. Headbutt by uh, Offa. Double team effort continues. Afa with a split lip as a result of uh, Johnny Rods earlier with that uh, side kick. Legitimate tag for a change on the part of the Samoans. Sika laying him in on Johnny Rods. Afa. Joining in as well, Rod certainly in the wrong part of town. Ooh, Johnny Rod's level to the canvas. It just can't let the Samoans gain an advantage. You have to keep them off balance. Give them something you're not looking for. But in almost every case, the Samoans will find their way to victory one way or the other. Tag made again, and Johnny Rod's going nowhere. Very unusual move, headbutt to the sternum area of the chest. Rods is out of it. But he'll keep trying. Tenacious wrestler is Johnny Rods. Rods would like nothing better than the tag. Jose Estrada gets a little bit closer. Yes, the tag was made. Now here comes Jose Estrada. (laughs) 
Estrada, one-man gang in there at the moment. And Afa goes reeling. Sika takes a shot, drop kick. To the ropes, shoulder block, moves the Samoan back a bit. To the ropes, but this time, the Samoan drop. The cover. There for a while, it appeared as though Jose Estrada really found the ticket in dealing with the Samoans, but unfortunately, as has happened so many, many times in the past, just when you think you have the Samoans right where you want them, they'll turn it around. They'll defeat you so quickly, it would make your head spin. at least on the part of Isaiah Estrada and Johnny Robbs, and they certainly had their moments in the tag team match. Although it was non-title, Robbs and Estrada made a very good accounting of themselves, and I'm sure the Samoans remember this match for quite some time. Let's go back, take a look at slow motion action if we have it. Here, Estrada shoved to the rope, headed off, got a pretty good uh, body block there on Afa, not enough to take him down, but there, perfect execution on the part of Afa. The Samoan drop, the head right into the uh, solar plexus area, knocking the air out of Jose Estrada, and of course, the Samoans on to victory, and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of the Samoans in weeks to come here on Championship Wrestling Schedule.